friends, this is Oksana from funstemper.com and today I would like to share with you a really fun, funky fold. It's actually super unusual. Did you ever wonder what will happen if you take a gatefold card, simple gatefold, that opens like this with belly band and closes like this and then you will take your standard easel type of card that has this nice stand and really nice presentation. What if you take them and combine together? Let me show you the new funky fold. It's called easel gate fold. I guess this is the name. So it looks really similar to your normal gate fold. It has a belly band and has a two panels and it opens like so. But guess what happens? You also have this metal panel that become your easel fold. Isn't that fun? So let me show you how to make this particular fold. For this fold, you will need one sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11. And we will start from a scoring first. So on the long side, you will score like regular card. So you score it at five and a half. And on the short uh, side, you will do exactly as you normally do for your gatefold. So you score two and one eighths on both sides. And you're gonna do it all the way. And here you create it those longer rectangles. For this fold, we don't need those two. So what you can do, you could go ahead and cut them with your snips. I'm recommending to use your trimmer to make straight edges. So position it at five and a half and cut to the score line again. I kind of try not to go all the way and I could make it with the snips. And then you turn it and position it two one eighths and cut. The trick here, you wanna see this our score line. You actually want it to cut slightly inside. So not exactly on score line, but kind of make sure that score line gets completely cut off. So you start from where your mark is and you will do it exactly the same on another side. So position it on the score line and slightly move it. So you cut it inside, oops. It's turned, you want it to have nice and precise cut. So now it's cut it. If it's not cut all the way, don't, don't tear it up. Just take your snips and help those extra rectangles to get kind of connected. This is a nice piece. Don't throw it away. We probably could make a bookmark or some other decoration. So go ahead, snip it like so. Now we will need, so now we basically have our fold. So you're gonna fold this card in a half, see almost like your long card, and then you're gonna fold your gates. And this is why we scored or cut a little bit kind of inside to make sure it's not cutting and not helping paper to smoothly close. So this is your base. And now we're gonna do additional scoring, similar like we will do for our easel fold. So what we need to do for the easel fold, we will need to score this piece, that's your top, at two and three fourths. So two and three fourths, and this has become base of your easel. So this is just those cuts and scores that you will need to create a base. And then you're ready to start decorating. So what additional supplies you need? 
you will actually could stamp those panels uh, and do additional kind of decoration. Um, I chose to use um, Gilded Autumn designer paper. The paper is so beautiful and adds so much to the project. So just with the copper and, uh, and kind of falling, fall seamed uh, designs, I just absolutely love it. So those panels, you will need two identical pieces of designer paper measured one seven eighths by five and a quarter, two for the top and two for the inside. And this is what we got. And I actually use the same paper, but I will just reverse. And you could go ahead and start gluing. It's gonna be hard to decide which gonna go on top and which gonna go inside. But let's just roll with that and see what will happen. So use your favorite adhesive, whatever you prefer to glue it. To your gates. following supplies. So you need a piece of paper, slightly smaller, uh, four by five and a quarter to be your focal point. And I chose to use men macaron. And you will need the similar piece for inside. And I choose it to have, uh, this provides the same size, four by five and a quarter. We're not gonna quite glue men macaron yet as we will do some stamping. For the inside of our easel fold, I chose to use Beautiful Autumn Suite and those leaves. It's actually a case from a catalog. So if you look in a catalog, what awesome designer team came up with, here is a card in a catalog. And I attempted to reproduce um, this kind of design myself. So what we will also, in addition, need, we will need a square of uh, three and three quarter crumb cake, and we will need a square three and a half by three and a half of Whisper White, and I cut a circle with layering circle, kind of this type of a circle. Um, and let's do a little bit of stamping to give it um, some background. I will take those leaves. And first I will stamp tone on tone with men macaron on four by five and a quarter piece of men macaron. I quite like this technique to add little bit of color to the plain cardstock. And now you could go ahead and stamp the same we're doing tone on tone. We're gonna stamp the, the same leaves, or split. Some, I needed some splatter type of image, inside of crumb cake, so it's gonna be visible through our wreaths. like so. Now we will be ready to assemble our wreaths. Adhere your whisper white piece and the circle also gives you a little background, a little kind of guidance how to stamp or how to assemble our wreaths. All right, so for this wreath you will need six of each um, smaller and bigger leaves, and I chose to stamp them in mint macaroon. Let me show you quickly how to stamp those and what I find the easiest way to go to do. 
a stamp has, this is two stamp stamping. So you have inside and you have outside. So let me show you how to do it with a smaller leaf. You could actually stamp and color, but I find that it's much faster for me to do two stamp stamping than color each individual leaf. Stamp your outline first, and I'm gonna use Cajun Craze for that. And you will just stamp a few of those. And for inside, I also gonna use this color, but I wanna stamp it off. Bring your scrap piece of paper if you don't want it to use your regular um, workspace, and you're gonna stamp it off and you're gonna stamp inside. It's quite easy to line up. So you will use, you will stamp, stamp eight of them for the card, and you will do the same with mint macaron. Um, they both were stamped on Whisper White. For your little acorn, you will stamp on crumb cake. I suggest you to stamp uh, with a soft suede or maybe uh, some darker brown like early espresso. And I actually didn't do two step stamping on the bottom part, just on the, on the top and it was crumb cake. All right, so we are ready to assemble our wreaths. The, the easy way I found is to use those sleeves and apply many dimensional to the back. And you will glue them alternating between mint macaroon leaf and uh, Cajun craze. I like many dimensionals. First of all, it gives you a little bit of uh, kind of raised one, but you could also super easy reposition it. And now our wreath is all ready and we could start assembling our card. So let's go ahead and adhere our wreath to the mint macaroon card, kind of in the middle. And now we will adhere this piece to our easel part of the card. So you will want to apply strong adhesive, either wet glue, seal plus, or tear tape, but only apply to the bottom rectangle as the top part needs to be moved. Make sure you leave equal borders and don't glue, put glue all the way to the bottom right and left. Position your piece and let it dry. During this time, we will be creating uh, our greeting and things inside. So for our greeting, we will take strip of uh, Whisper White. This is just half inch leftover strips that I have plenty of laying around. And I always save them just for those greetings. And this greeting says, have a beautiful day. And it's greeting long like this kind of let it, put it on your work surface and pick up as your block. This way it's not gonna be crooked. You will use Cajun Craze and step on a long strip and we're gonna hand cut. To make it nice edges, I'm just gonna hand cut and an angle on both sides. Now let's mount this one to the piece of copper foil. And I cut copper foil slightly larger, um, so I have a little bit of border picking. So let's go ahead and glue it to the copper foil, and then we will trim edges to match Whisper White. If you're using wet glue, you may want to give it a little bit of time to set. Now we're gonna add 
have a greeting to the inside of the wreaths. So take a couple of dimensionals and put them in, in the middle of the greetings. And probably add a little bit of adhesive to both sides. Now let's take our acorn that we did earlier and add this uh, dimensional kind of below our greedy. We will also tie a bow to put it on top of the acorn, like so. Look how pretty. Now we will need to create some kind of stopper. So when you open this card, it actually could stand. I cut two different pieces of um, designer paper just to give it a little bit more color. And let me just glue it. Um, so those pieces are four inch wide and have a different uh, width. This one I believe is one and a half and another one is one inch. I still would like to create a stopper, but I don't want it to be puffed up too much. As remember, this card still need to be closed and you will add a belly band. So you don't want it to be too bulky inside. So you want it to be relatively flat uh, and not too much dimensions. So for this stopper, um, I decided to go with a um, piece of crumb cake. It's a celebration tidying uh, label. And this is gonna be my stopper. I will add it with dimensionals. Again, we want it to be a little bit higher so it stops our card. So take two three dimensionals and adhere it to the point where you want a card to stop. And I'm gonna just align it with my designer paper and see now it's perfectly stopping the card. And to make it a little bit prettier, I will go ahead and add our one of each of the leaves and little acorn. But what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna glue them flat as I don't want it to have it more raised than it is right now. So one leaf on each side. Inside of our cart is ready, except of the bow. We will do them two at the same time. Now let's create our belly band. So you see the cart is closing, like so. So for the belly band, we will cut a strip of paper that measures approximately one and a half by 11. We don't need it that quite long, but we could always trim the axis. You want to make sure that your belly band is relatively loose, so it allows easily to slide. I don't do any scoring, so what I find it to be easier just to take this piece of the strip and kind of wrap it around. Just leave it a little bit off room and the same here I wanted it to kind of wrap it around and I could always readjust so I could come back I kind of know where it's supposed to fold so I readjust it to make it a little bit straighter okay let's measure it one more time to make sure that it's gonna fit and gonna slide easy See right now, it's I actually, when I fold, I left a little bit of room. Uh, I don't need to have this to be quite that long. So I will go ahead and trim one of the sides. If you start with around 10 inches, you will be fine. Because this thing gonna be sliding on and off, I do recommend to use your tear tape. You're gonna apply it to one side and then underneath another and make it make them shut. All right. So let's just 
make sure it fits before we start decorating it. It fits perfect. All right, to add a little bit of bling, I decided to use one inch strip embossed strip of um, copper. As you could see, I had a piece left over and it's not quite big enough. That's not a problem. You go ahead and cut it. So your strips could be probably as long as one and a half inches and you should be fine. Add your glue and glue them aligning to the sides. I'll put my block to make sure it's dry and we will start to make our belly band. So for this, uh, I will use two die cuts that was made from um, Stitch So Sweetly. This is an early espresso in Whisper White. And we're gonna stamp a sentiment. My heart is grateful for you from the same stamp set. And I'm gonna use Cajun Craze for this as well. Cajun Craze is such a beautiful color. Unfortunately, I don't use it enough, but I always use it in fall. It's probably my number one used color this time of the year. But then for some reason, I just forgot about it for a couple more months and then rediscover again. So here you have your greeting. You're gonna go ahead and adhere it to your backing, to another label. Then you will take few dimensionals and I suggest you just put them in the middle. Just take your three dimensionals and you're gonna add it to your belly band. Like so. Some extra decorations. So we're gonna add one of those leaves. You will add another leaf. If I find it here and little acorn. And you take your linen thread, or I actually have it here, um, braided linen trim. So let's do this one. You just create two bows, one for inside and one for outside, and add it to your card with a glue dot. So we're adding this one here, and we're gonna add one for inside. And our double funky fold card is ready. So here is the finished card with a belly band, removed belly band. It opens like this and could be displayed nicely. Here is the original card that I created before. So as you could see, it's different designer paper, but similar inside. I really like the copper um, paper. So let me show you the funky fold, double funky fold for Christmas. So this is the same fold, use poinsettia bundle. So opens like this and here is the inside. I hope you like this new fold and you will give it a try. Uh, please follow me on Facebook or on YouTube. Visit funstamper.com for more information and for additional inspiration. And until next time, happy stamping. <music>